minutes. Thanks. Um, does anybody have any comments on the minutes at all? There were three items on the agenda. No? None at all? All right. Um, all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? One abstention. Um, motion carried. On to the consent calendar of Tuesday, January 17th. Can I have a motion to ratify those minutes? I'll make that motion. Made by Paul. Second, second by Keith. Okay, for last week, uh, consent calendar January 17th, we had only one item, 2200 block of Modoc Road. That was an intersection of Modoc and Portisuelo. That was approved with conditions, and that was reviewed by Chris Gilliland and Paul Zink. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? One abstention by Stephanie, I presume. Motion carries. Consent calendar for January 23rd. Um, can I have a motion for those? Made by Paul. Second by Chris. Okay, Tony. Okay. Consent calendar today we had item A, 604 Santa Barbara Street. Uh, review after final was continued indefinitely. Item B, 7 South Milpa Street, was postponed indefinitely. Item C, 302 Meigs Road, got a final approval with conditions. And item D, 709 East Haley Street, a review after final was approved as submitted. And consent today was reviewed by Paul Zink and Chris Gilliland. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Stephanie's abstaining. Motion carries. Um, do we have any announcements, requests by applicants for continuances and withdrawals, etc.? Madam Chair, I don't think there's any change to today's agenda, but we also wanted to recognize Stephanie for coming on board to ABR and welcome her. Officially, she is sworn in, so she can't participate. And um, also, um, I don't know if you're aware that um, every year uh, staff is responsible to do some staff uh, or some board training. And I just had uh, some um, board training for the Historic Landmarks Commission um, for um, their last meeting last week. And um, it was on purview. I don't know if this board is interested in re reviewing your purview. It's not as confusing uh, as HLCs because they have a lot of things going downtown, with, which is um, they get concurrent reviews with other boards and commissions uh, that city have. But if you're interested in that, I'd like to hear some feedback on what you would like the board to be trained on. I do have also a code of conduct uh, series of trainings that I'm going to begin also. So let me know if you're interested in anything in specific. Uh, I'll, I'm glad to try to customize it for this board. Are we supposed to do that right now? No, this is one of the heads up. Uh, I probably will be sending out some email communication saying there's certain topics that we're lining up. So if you have any strong feelings uh, or preferences, please let me know. Okay. Is that different than the ethics training that everybody does individually? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Does anybody have any questions about that or comments? What would be an example of something you would want to be trained on? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you want it, but I, I do get directed occasionally to try to get most, some target trainings on um, design guidelines or um, uh, specific, uh, more conduct-related type of trainings, how to handle certain situations. I think the last uh, training that we had was, uh, well, there are several topics. We had something on um, cool roofs uh, and um, uh, green roofs that this it was uh, jointly held with other boards and commissions. So occasionally there are some interesting informations that we can share. Uh, we have some information on 
um, um, runoffs that we've we've had a contractor come in and, and actually train staff on the different types of materials now and how to do a actual a good um, paver systems. There's some really specific installations for pavers. So as we get a bit more informed, we want to share that with our boards. And so it takes a while, though, so to sort of share the information and put together a sort of a PowerPoint so it's easier under, understood. Uh, so we occasionally have topics. Anything you are interested, we can also put together. Okay. Thanks, Jaime. Madam Chair, I have an announcement. I have to uh, yeah. step down from items two and four. Okay. Today. Any other announcements? Yeah, um, yeah I'll be stepping down for item two. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have any subcommittee reports? No. All right. Then we're on to our general agenda, starting with item number one. Go ahead. I think we postponed the vice chair election. Oh, you're right. So we can reopen that. We did do that. Like to do that. Um, two weeks ago, we had a, a tie vote for the vice chair position and so we tabled that um, so we should probably do that right now um, and I think we should just do another vote so we need to make um, we we actually had the nominations already right there was a tie in several nominations there were two nominations and there was a tie between those two so we just have to uh, revote am I correct Oh, we're going to open it up for nominations again. Okay, um, so I'll open the. I'll um, like to <laughs> really. <laughs> okay, um, do we have any nominations for vice chair? Nominate Keith. Okay, Chris is nominating Keith. Any other nominations? Madam Chair, I uh, nominate Paul. All right, Gary's nominating Paul. Any others? All right. We will pass out the ballots. Conduct. So this is a closed ballot. Closed ballot again. With the um, the winner being announced. Just that's it. Waiting for the votes to be tallied. <laughs> okay. So Paul Zink would be the vice chair. All right. Congratulations, Paul. No speech. Okay. So uh, we'll move on to our, our normal agenda, starting with item number one which is 3851 State Street. Please come forward. This is our second concept review. We saw this two weeks ago. Action may be taken if sufficient information is provided. And I'm sure we have a copy of the minutes. They're right here. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're not right there. Um, 3851. Provide. This is 3849. It's uh, the same location. It's just the city has used two different uh, street addresses for that site. So these same seven items? It's interesting because they're different. Not this. Maybe this one. Okay. Great. So we have provide a landscape plan. 
Oh, come on. Oh, we know what we need. We need you to... Here. Yes. Here we go. Okay, there should be a landscaping plan in here. Yeah, maybe we'll just run through the items one by one. Okay. That sounds like a good idea. Go ahead. So provide a landscape plan that includes tree replacement and substantial mm -hmm. landscaping. Okay, so we've got the tree replacement in this particular planter box. We have added landscaping around the patio. We've added landscaping here on the sidewalk. There's more landscaping added here. So that's all the landscaping. And also here and along here. this wall. On this wall. Correct. Yeah. All right. Study the chimney height. And let's go to the elevations. What we did on the chimney was we have lowered the overall height and the body mass. So it's not as high as it was on the original proposal, and it's not as wide and massive as it was on the other um, plans that we submitted two weeks ago. Someone also commented last time that the white space, I guess, between when the chimney starts to narrow and the top of, I guess, the fireplace opening was kind of a void, so we've narrowed that space as well. All right. And it's light fixtures are to provide downcasting lighting. Do you have a Yeah, what we did was before, last time we had prevented a fixture that was just going to uplight the building. Now we got a fixture that's up and down. So the overall height has been increased. So we have relocated exactly to make sure that we have sufficient clearance from where the light fixtures are going to come. So this is a, an upward casting light fixture? Up and, up, up and down. This is what was presented at the last meeting, which was just up. So this one's up and down. Okay. Number four was provide the design continuity for the proposed screening adjacent to the proposed wrought iron railing. We have eliminated the cedar screening, so that's no longer in the proposal. Okay. And the uh, pattern of the wrought right. iron rails has also changed to make it more of a traditional style mm -hmm. uh, with uh, components that are readily available from conventional parts. <coughs> All right. Steady softening the plaster color. We, what we did on the plastic. <laughs> we had a discussion with uh, with the land, uh, with the with our architect, and um, they said uh, that what they propose to do is to match the plaster to that color of the rest of the building. Um, and uh, we've also added in this plan for your review, which is something new actually. Uh, before the north face of the building. Uh, excuse me, north face of the building and the east face of the building, this was just cinder block. And mm -hmm. you asked last time whether we were going to leave that in place, and we said yes. After further study and taking a closer look at our budget, uh, we, we can put some dollars against this as well, make it look prettier by matching the color and the style of the walls with the rest of the building and more of a Santa Barbara style by putting plaster over the cinder block as well. Do we have a sample of that color? Or do we just need to look at the photo? Maybe, Tony, do we? Have the same color that um, it would be the same color as the rest of the building. Uh, I know, I guess. Yeah. Is that the color? Yeah, that's okay. pretty close, close to, to it. What? Is that still your stain color? That's, uh, we spoke to architects about that. Apparently, um, the landlord has been in for uh, woodwork on the rest of the building, and that's apparently what they have either submitted or approved. So we just think it makes sense that our side of the building match the rest of the building as well. Um, provide more design element details. Design element details. Okay, so let's the go trellis, with the right? trellis, yeah. There's more there, so that's right, does it? Um, see another view of the trellis. Yeah, there was another sheet that had the...
these are the ones that shows right uh, we have reconfigured the trellis membranes and made those smaller two by eight and changed the ends and made them look more interesting so they are not as massive as was of the original design and then we also added uh, pavers for the uh, concrete finish permeable pavers for the patio the concrete walk you have um, detail drawn through here that we can read? For the uh, trellis? Yeah. With the number of sizes. Right, here we go. It should be on these drawings here. So there, there were several comments last time. One of them was that there was a higher, higher, hierarchy issue that somebody raised that they thought the members on the top were too big for relative to the column size. So architect has reduced the size of the members, the cross beams on top. Um, also, they changed the orientation of uh, the beams so that uh, from an east-west, you know, sun direction perspective, um, it would provide more shade so that we eliminated the umbrellas because that was one of the concerns last time was that the umbrellas might conflict with the heaters we have on the trellises as well. What's the size? Of, what's the size? Is I think that was the question. Yeah, the top ones you said are two by eights at what spacing? We've done the spacings are shown here, new. 4 by 12 main, main runners. runners. Looks like they're 2 by 12. 2 by 12. Yeah. Okay. At 18 inches. So that's it for your details that so far? So far. Mm -hmm. And Correct. we added to the plans also, as Nina pointed out, a preliminary plan for the permeable pavers. Mm -hmm. And this is something we've been working with. Uh, I think architects have been talking to you about this, Tony, about uh, permeability issues as well. So that's kind of their first plan on the uh, papers. All right. Do you have anything else for your presentation? Uh, I think that's about it for the overall. Yep. That's right. Yeah. That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, those All are right. the things I had on the list, too. Yeah. Umbrellas are gone. Cedar screening's gone. Yeah, medical yeah. just gone. Okay. That's right. Thanks. Um, do we have any public comment for this project? No public comment? Um, questions? <coughs> any questions, Chris? Yeah, I just have one. Um, do we have any photos showing that existing planter in front of the building? Tony? May. What is it, the existing, which one? The planner that's uh, in front of the, the existing um, building. It's actually low. Right here? Mm, uh, it's, uh, is it the, are you talking about the island or the one that's right in front of the building? Right in front of the building. Okay. It's so dark that you won't be able to see it in this photo. Yeah. No, I walked by there the other day and there's uh, some little scrubby palm trees. Yeah. In there, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there are four palm trees in there, but there was an approved plan to replant it uh, that are in our construction drawings for the first phase of construction. Oh. Yeah. So to repair, uh, replace, to per replace existing plan. Yeah, okay. we'd actually like to keep the palm trees on uh, white chopped down trees and just fill it in with uh, additional greenery. Okay, great. Yeah. Is that on your yeah. landscape plan? It's on not on this plan, but on the first phase of construction, which is a sep is, which is a separate building permit. Okay. So that's the existing planner, right? Exactly. Right okay. Just see, so see where it is. Gary, do you have any questions? It's this planner here. Um, to, uh, the brick material. Do you have a sample of the brick cap for the wall? Uh, Unfortunately, you do not. no. <laughs> you have a color or a <coughs> style or a size. Um. We do not. Okay. Um, and uh, this is, I guess this is kind of a question. Well, why did you choose to have a 10 foot high back wall? Um, is that this wall? Yeah. yeah, it's between two parking lots. It's 10 feet. Uh, this wall here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the whole wall? The whole wall? Yeah. The from the last time yeah, because um, it says that we. Here. 
we increase the height of the wall. Right, raise the screen so wall, do the high light fixtures to meet we, uh, ADA requirements. Okay. Fixtures project more than four inches, need to relocate them at six foot eight inches minimum. Oh, that's, that's where you put that dimension. Yeah. That's, that's, right. that's for the up lighting though, right? Um, yeah, those were for the uplighting. Right, somebody had a question about why it was only uplighting last time, so we added downlighting to it as well. I think the, 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 the thing comment is, was to have downcasting light fixtures. Only downcasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uplighting's not permitted. I, mm -hmm. I see. But just to clarify, yeah. last time, was this wall eight feet tall? I don't think so. I think Let me it was, look at the plans we submitted. I think for the architects, you know, it was... Notes, it was Okay, we'll it's look. ten, but was there a comment last time on that or no? Tony, do you have the plans from last meeting? I probably have the 11 by 17. I think this is the last time. Uh, I don't know, we have to go down a little bit further. It was eight feet tall. It was eight feet. Mm -hmm. So Gary, should we just do downlighting and go back to HP? Is we're going to make comments in a minute. Okay. Uh, Gary, any more questions? No. Kirk, any questions? No. Paul? Um, I had one question. How are you going to be constructing the outdoor fireplace? Is it going to be a manufactured kind of a metal box with plaster and metal studs? Or is it actually going to be a masonry fireplace with masonry block going all the way up? Uh, we haven't gotten the structural engineer involved in the design okay. of the fireplace yet. Thank you. Yeah. Stephanie, any questions? I was just asking for wood burning or gas. It would be gas. It would be a gas appliance. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, comments. Chris, you want to start? Uh, sure. Let me go back to the landscape plan. Oh, you know what? I, I'm sorry. I had a couple questions. Yeah. Forgot about me. <laughs> I think um, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Oh, just one. On the landscape plan, there was um, one more. One more page. What's that little strip for right uh, here? I think it's the same as this side, the curb step out. So when people get out of the car. How wide is it? I don't have a scale ruler. Let's take a look here. It may be just a few looks like inches or so. It says yeah, it looks like one a inch five. equals eight. It looks like a foot. foot. Yeah. yeah. So th that's why I was wondering. If, um, so it's just for people to. You're planting it except for a foot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, okay, Chris, are you ready for comments or do you want me to bash you by? Right now. Um, first of all, thank you for the addition of the landscaping. I think it's going to help quite a bit. We have vines going up the columns, <coughs> and we've uh, surrounded the, the patio, and I think the pavers will actually be nice, too. We'll wait to see exactly which pavers you'll be using. Um, I think these little um, concrete step-outs that you have, I mean, basically the uh, parking spot number 36 there mm -hmm. next uh, between that and your patio is only a two-foot bed, and so you have a lavender that you're planting in a one-foot bed. I, I have, I, you know, I, I'm, I don't think the concrete is necessary. <coughs> I think uh, more bed, more planting would be more suitable for that. Um, the same thing on the other side of 38. Okay. But I would ask, you know, if anyone else has input on that to to say something. Um, the 10 foot wall to me seems quite high. I do applaud you for lowering the fireplace three feet. I think that could actually even go a little bit further. Um, but other than that, I'm curious to see what the planting is in that existing, <coughs> existing bed that I mentioned in front of the building, just to see if it, what, you know, what, what the call outs are there. If it, see if it matches what you're proposing here. But other than that, I think uh, you've satisfied what I was looking for. Thanks, Chris. Gary? Thanks, Mr. Um, 
Yeah, some of the same comments that that ten foot wall I, I feel is a bit high. I actually, kind of feel eight feet high, but I didn't get that last time. Um, um, I'd like to see some materialities on the bricks. See what the what's happening with the with the wall and what's it's going to look like. Details on on the wall, what the overhang's going to be on it. Um, still would like to see some details on the wrought iron work. And um, the the lighting is a bit disappointing. I think the style of the lighting is disappointing as well as the the function. It should be downcasting, but I'm not sh I, I'm not sure that this style is compatible with the with the design that you've chosen for this for the outside. But I'll leave others to comment on that. And. Um, and I would agree with Chris that the concrete in the planter is, I, I, I feel that's unnecessary. I, I think it should be all planter. That's up. All right, Kirk. Thank you, Thank you sir. Um, I won't, uh, I, I feel uh, uh, similar to the previous uh, two um, board members who commented the uh, wall height to come down, uh, the concrete alongside. Uh, Uh, the uh, concrete alongside both parking space 36 and 38 should be eliminated and those should just be planters. Um, and we do, in order to move on to the next level of approval, um, you, you need to provide a larger scale detail of the columns, uh, the column caps and the bases and the connections of the, and the sizes of the beams that go over the top. Um, as well as uh, wrought iron details, um, brick cap details, and um, chimney chimney uh, details. You know, you like the likelihood is that you'll need a spark arrester in the top of that chimney cap, and we want to make sure that the surround that you're showing there is is going to work um, so that it appears the way that you've drawn it when it's finally built. And um, one other, oh yeah, the the, uh, the top member of the trellis I think should be smaller in height. So uh, rather than uh, matching the height of the, the, the larger bottom members, it should also, it should be smaller in height, like a two by eight, for example. If it needs to be a three by eight, um, but uh, 12 inch, I think, is too tall for the top members there. Those are my comments. Thanks. Paul? I'll just follow on with what Kurt was saying. I agree completely that this could be a 3 by 8, a 4 by 8, but going with the 12 inch dimension was a little bit too large. The second, if, it, if it's a 2 by 12 at 18 inches on center, that's a little bit too narrow and tall. And so this could be become either a three by eight or a four by eight, and that's just one person's suggestion. Um, when you get to the next level, he was commenting about the details of the fireplace. I'm thinking that this appears to be a little bit too narrow when you start building this. If you're building it on a um, mm -hmm. block or whatever, and I'm thinking this this side looks a little bit too narrow. So I don't know exactly what your fireplace design is going to be, but, but the the construction of it is going to dictate a lot of that. And if you can bring down the height, it would be appropriate or appreciated to bring down this height. And uh, Height of the chimney? The height of the chimney. It still seems tall, but if that's what it needs to be, then that's what it needs to be. But right now, it seems too spindly. Um, and apologize for the miscommunication about the wall height and the lighting. We like to see downcasting light, not upcasting. I personally don't have a problem with the light fixture being selected because if that's the type that this chain restaurant has for their outdoor patios, then it's completely fine. But we would like to see a down lighting, okay. not an up lighting component. Um, other than that, thank you. And I agree with what this Paul already said. Okay, Keith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I agree with all the previous comments. I think lowering the wall height, um, down uh, light fixtures only, and, and the uh, other comments that uh, Paul just made about 
fireplace proportions when you bring the wall down. So really nothing nothing new to add. All right, Stephanie. Um, other comments? Um, I would study the fireplace, and the, if it's uh, simply a gas appliance, it may not need um, as tall a flue as you're suggesting it does here. So study that for the next event. Is that it? I concur with all the other okay. previous. Uh, uh, Chair, I have, uh, one additional thing, just if I can butt in mm -hmm. for a second. And that's, you know, we suggest lowering the, the wall height and the chimney height, but don't be afraid to move that trellis down as well. Just, we need, you know, certain uh, proportion that, and, you know, once you lower the wall height, I think it'll make sense where the uh, arbor should go as well. Okay. That's it. Um, I just, I, may have to do with the, with I think everybody said everything. Everybody covered mine except in addition to shortening the, the joys of the trellis, I think they should be wider than two inches. I think just shortening them is not enough. So, um, I think a four by eight is much more appropriate with, um, with four by eight or three by eight or I don't know. It just... Depends on what the span is. Yeah, the and, the, and your spacing, but but um, I think you have to fiddle around with that a little bit more. But two by twelve is going to not be appropriate. So just understand what the two is and the twelve is, or the four. This and is the eight. two, and this is too narrow. Okay, so these should be wider. Wider and shorter. Wider and shorter. But look at look at some traditional uh, Spanish style trellises in town okay. and for some clues as to what's appropriate. And I bet you won't see a whole lot of two-by material around town. Um, and yeah. we'll let you, your architect, you know, ultimately design it. But, because there's, there's different things you could do. Sure. <laughs> uh, but two-by is generally not used. Okay. Um, and then I, I still, I don't, I don't know what got approved with this stain color, but I don't think it's an appropriate stain color. <coughs> For um, the wood trellis, so if if you have um, an example or a photo of something that that did get approved, and then I might change my mind. I just don't like it right now. <laughs> um, I may be the only one though. So um, that's those are the comments. You've heard them all. This project. Um, is one for which action may be taken if sufficient information is provided. We, this is concept review. Um, the, the level of approval would be project design approval. Um, the final detailing is not necessarily required for all the elements for project design approval. And I think you were stating that for the next review you said that I just want to make it clear that that would details are full details are required for final but if anybody felt that this project we, was we did ask for something. what we did ask for the last meeting. we did Ma madam chair also I maybe I'm misunderstanding but I was just looking at the minutes from last week and it looks like we did give it project design approval already oh we did I'm sorry no, I apologize I think that's the umbrella one. That was for the umbrella. Uh, for the okay. Excuse me. Okay. So we, stand this portion of the project, this particular project, um, does not have project design approval. But if somebody felt that it, um, well, I'll entertain a motion. Let's just leave it at that. Um, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion for project design approval uh, with the following comments. And then you'll come back to full board with these items, and then we'll review them before we can give you final. Um, the first one is the apologize for the miscommunication on the wall height, and we'd like you to return to a wall height of eight feet or less, because that's what the previous design was. Mm -hmm. The second comment is to have a downcasting yeah. light right. only. Okay. Okay. The third comment is to provide a, a sample of the. Uh, the stain 
that was approved on another mm -hmm. portion of the building, if that's why you're following that, just so we have that for reference. Mm -hmm. The fourth comment is to provide um, construction details for the trellis, making the top member wider and not as tall, such as a 3x8 or a 4x8. But really, the depth is based upon your span, and the structural engineer has to determine that. <laughs> Fifth comment would be to provide some preliminary construction details for the fireplace, taking into account um, the spark arrestor and the um, cap that goes over it. I lost count. Um, and did you guys want the sample of the cap also? Well, uh, the brick. The brick, yes, I had that. Um, a material board with a with a, with a brick, okay. as well as for the pavers. And then at the um, landscape, uh, remove the concrete step out that was shown. Mm -hmm. And provide additional details um, as for the wrought iron railing. Provide construction details for the wrought iron railing. And that's all that I have written. Do I have a second? Second. And, um, under discussion. Yeah, sure. um, since the building is taking a uh, turn towards the Spanish with the, with the new plaster, uh, um, should uh, I'm just curious about other lighting fixtures that are either currently on the outside. Of the I'm curious about uh, lighting fixtures uh, on the outside of the building that are visible, uh, other than the ones that are concealed within the courtyard, that they be of uh, Spanish style as well. I don't know how other board members so feel about wanna, that. Uh, do you want to modify the, the the line item about the downcast lighting? And, and how well, do you feel? About, how does the maker of the motion feel about that? The maker of the motion. Personally, I don't have a problem with you having a thematic lighting fixture because it goes with the chain restaurant. Other people on the board have it, have concerns with that. So you have to decide how how badly you want a light fixture of this vernacular. If you're going to be plastering the entire building, there might be some additional light fixtures that are going to get altered in the relationship of being plastered. We'd like to see all of the proposed lighting, the exterior light fixtures. So we don't know what's happening on that side of the building, but his point is that if you're plastering something over there and there's a light fixture, mm -hmm. you're going to be changing the character of it. And if you're lowering your wall, you mm -hmm. might have to provide a different light fixture anyway. Correct. So. Do you want... If, um, um, Should we do we need to modify that that item of the motion to state to study the light I, fixtures? I think you should study the light fixtures. And you them we can also do a straw poll and actually give him a, fun, a solid direction if people feel strong enough about it. Um, okay, really quickly, how many board members can um, could possibly entertain a non-Spanish? vernacular light exterior light fixture please raise your hands um, so you have the majority of the board saying that it's kind of open to you mm -hmm. but um, to study so Gloria I'm hearing that we can add study the light fixtures instead of just downcasting to study the fixture itself um, is that it was that it for you I had one item that Chris commented on and that was document the existing and proposed landscaping in the in the existing east facing shaded planter right is that all right any any more discussion items yes madam chair yeah uh, for Kirk and Stephanie's benefit there's a there's another project coming through the ABR that you all have seen I think twice this is called Building I in La Cumbre Plaza. You know, it's this long building from Backyard Bowls at the far end down to Panera Bread. And they're coming in to kind of break that up into different architectural styles a little bit to break up the linearity of this building. And some of that is it's leaning toward more of a Spanish style. And some of that also has some trellis elements in front of part of the tenant spaces. Just to remind you all of that, um, we haven't seen their light fixtures yet. For what they're proposing for the rest of this building. 
Um, also, if you could add something in the motion that the stormwater management program solution needs to be resolved, we need to have the engineer finalize what he's doing with stormwater before this comes back for a final approval. They won't be able to get a final approval without that. Do you understand what he was just saying? Mm -hmm. I, uh, you can add that to the motion. Okay. Got that, Gloria? All right. Is that it? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Could I add, ask a question? Uh, on the material board, there was a question about bringing back uh, samples of the brick, so brick pavers and also the brick caps. Is that right for the yeah. tops so of the wall? We're going to want samples of all the materials on okay. a on a finished schedule. Okay. And details of everything that you're proposing. Okay. We may want to bring the board on with the red right eye. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Thank you. We are, you're welcome. Get We're a little bit behind still um, on the item number two, five seventeen West Figueroa Street. Sure, I'll be safe. Okay, thanks, Tony. All right. Uh, this is this is a continued third concept review, uh, and the last meeting we had, which was back in December. We had a motion with the following three comments. The changes from the previous scheme are appreciated to provide further articulation of the architecture, especially the wall planes, to provide variation and articulation to the building mass. The street facade is of particular concern. Add further three-dimensional massing articulation to soften the three-story plane. Three, study changes to the parapets and roof lines for additional undulation. Your name for the record. Right. <clears throat> Madam Chair, the new Madam Chair. Uh, Mark Winkie, architect, and Steve Johnson, the owner, is also here. <clears throat> so two new board members, I guess, are you coming up to speed on this particular site? Do you, have, do you know where it is? Yeah, Drew oh, Okay. It's hard to find. <clears throat> it's... Um, the West, the West Side Boys Club area, Boys and Girls Club. It's a basically a block south of there. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, in the old days, Mission Creek used to cross 101 and go around the Boys Club area, back underneath again. And they diverted that years ago. And so there's a basically an arroyo that's behind this property. And then there's uh, at the site plan I saw you were on shows the arroyo to the east of the site, which is a big green area on the. On this thing, this this particular area is an arroyo that actually aids five acres of watershed for the area, and we're treating the water as as we are now doing in the city uh, through this process of ponds. And because of that, we uh, the city and the and the owner negotiated this 33 foot setback as opposed to a six foot setback, and we're using that in that regard to filter the water through a series of ponds from the surrounding area before it gets to this creek. It's basically not a creek anymore. It's an arroyo in the back. It's called Old, Old Mission Creek on the drawings. And then it goes uh, to this four-foot pipe that goes back underneath the railroad. The, re the reason it's called Railroad Loft Apartments is because it's right along the railroad. And then adjacent to that is obviously the 101 highway. And so <clears throat> if, you, if you turn really quickly to the page that has the section in it, which is like 908, the top section there kind of shows the profile. Okay, so the far left side is the railroad area. There's a eight foot fence with vines growing on it, a 10 foot plus an additional 18 inches of planting. The 10 foot is a setback that the client negotiated also with the city for a future bike path. We're also just using it for a bike path or a walking area same time too. Uh, there probably won't ever be a bike path there because it actually dead ends at Carrillo. 
there's a it's hard to get across there, but could be could be really 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 nice. Then there's a platform setback, and that's like the adage being uh, similar to older buildings that may have been along the railroad. There's a platform where the trains could unload and offload, but now they've been turned into condos or apartments, right? And so that deck area is the main walkway. It's all sitting on top of a podium, which is at grade where all the parking occurs, leaving the entire 33-foot area to the right as a bioswale cleanup area for the watershed. And on top of the podium is uh, four units uh, that are a um, little over 2,000 square feet, I think. And then the section below kind of shows how they're broken up. And we uh, had preliminary approval 2009, I think it was, and we were caught by the recession, and uh, the project fell through the cracks as far as did not have a three-year period for its term. It only had a one-year period for this preliminary, and now we're back here for preliminary approval. So the number of units have changed. Yeah. It used to have nine units, and they were all two bedrooms. Now they're uh, four or five bedroom, depending on how you look at it, and there's six units. There's one handicap accessible in the back where that one section turns cattywankas. Page 903, an AD accessible unit below, and then a two bedroom unit above or a three bedroom, I can't remember it anymore. Two. two bedroom. Okay, so just some of the changes that were made in plan quickly because they do reflect some of the changes that we made in elevations. And as you, if you sk skimmed ahead, you probably saw there were a couple of 3D axon drawings, which I think will show primarily all the ins and outs that have taken trouble to do. The first thing is we put the trash up inside the building here with access from the outside but also from the inside. You can get to it by taking your trash before you go to your car. You can go through the outside area and come in the door just like you did before. It's very easy to now, but it, what it does is it doesn't have to have a trash enclosure area that used to be in the front. It used to be in that other boxed area that we're going to now have as the electrical closet and, and potentially more storage. There's still plenty of parking. There's 18 stalls or 16 stalls here. Um, and the required ADA parking stalls. Um, and that's the podium unit in the back. Back area that has the individual storage units for the five units. There's additional parking for bikes. Uh, you can continue on, go through this area. Mark, ramp excuse down. me for interrupting, but um, I think that everybody who's actually supposed to be even voting on this is supposed to already know about the project, but and since we're running a little okay. behind, can you just go over the changes? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Get to the good stuff. Thanks. Okay, so these plans are, are even at, at full scale are small, but this plan here on page 906 shows basically what happens to each one of the units. And you can really start to tell how, especially the front area, uh, the first plane was, is set back four inches, and it was uh, it's basically negligible from before. It's actually sitting on the, the wall of the, the podium. And then... Um, on this side here, it sets back a foot and a half as a corner kind of bay unit, uh, and then there's some other elements. But then it c continues to undulate across with the foot and a half section in the back. And what it does, what you'll see in the elevations, is really break it up into smaller pieces. And as you see from the front, uh, or the public area, uh, it seems like a series of, of bay windows as opposed to a one long facade. The same thing basically occurs on this side, which is the east elevation facing the mountains, the walking unit side through a series of uh, recessed entryways uh, and other recesses. I probably would say we should skip. Can I go through these? Okay. The section, back to that section, section that shows the podium elevation, that east elevation. Uh, it's uh, maybe premature to look at that right now, but you basically can see some of the things I was talking about, which is the ins and outs, us utilizing two different materials a horizontal siding material and a stucco material to describe each one of the units. The page 916 is, a, is the front view. It's the perspective straight on, as you would see if you drove down. I can't remember the Wentworth. Pardon? What's the street that goes along the road? Walnut. Walnut. So that would dead end at this kind of elevation. Uh, it shows the royal to the right. It shows the undulation and or the setbacks of the three parts in the middle. Um, this side here and that side there. I think what it does is the, from the previous design is it makes the elements seem smaller. And there's actually kind of a recall element of this kind of swooping um, stucco piece to a little um, utility closet slash chimney form in that. This whole bottom section is board form concrete. It has to be concrete anyways because <clears throat> it's 
<clears throat> the podium is one foot thick for uh, the shear walls. <clears throat> Water. Uh, and then this element on the side here is, is also uh, in stucco, but it's a darker material kind of picking up like the manzanilla uh, or a, a maroon color form to it. This elevation shows, again, the ins and outs of the east elevation. This is 916, maybe number. Yeah. Next sheet. Um, and each one of the areas of the four podiums, there hasn't really been any questions or problems with the back unit, so that area I'm not really, I don't usually describe very much in this description. Each one of the units has a little private outdoor area before you get to the front door. And the areas have, uh, that have the awnings over them are st at the same locations. Those are the entryways. The other side shows the same thing. There's two small balconies for each one of the master bedroom and the living room area. And then the secondary bedroom has uh, glass windows that are articulated with muttons and the dining area below. Um, and then between the two, there's these uh, recessed chimney slots, I'm calling them, um, whereas the, they're set back further from the setback area. Okay, so just pure elevations on 910. And then 911 shows the same. And you can, you can start to see where the shadows occur between these pieces, the setback areas. Same on the lower elevation, which is the east elevation. And these are all the elevations, all on one page, like a construction drawing look with shadows. But I think you can see, and these are the sort of the manzanilla reddish colors for the stucco, the whitish color, and the gray uh, siding colors, the very final page. These red lines, are that's the roof edge. It's a little bit of an overhang. And the floor line uh, that comes to a, an integrated uh, chimney, I'm not sorry, integrated um, downspout off the corner there. That's it. Did you um, want to discuss any changes you made to the parapets or roof lines? Yeah. Those I did. Oh, you discussed it and I missed it? <laughs> no, those I, missed I, I, did. It. <laughs> I did those. You spent a lot of time on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you didn't want to talk about it. So uh, at one point, this was all one continuous roof form, if you remember back the second time. Uh, now this is not only set back, but it's also smaller in scale, and then this piece steps up. It's basically a, uh, a roof form uh, to create the simple box for the mass, and it goes back onto the roof for like uh, five or ten feet or something like that. Look at the roof plan. So it, does, it isn't just a small, thin piece that goes back a few feet. It actually, from the naked eye, anywhere you'd see it, it does that. And then I also have these utility closets, which are part of the solar panel system uh, that, that is going to be used on the roof, both for solar preheating pre of water and um, PVC, and those can occur in each one of these sections here. Uh, the same happens on this side. Now, on this side, you can actually see beyond to the little utility closets at that point. That's what's showing beyond here. But you can also see the same fashion as occur where it's, it bumps up for these bays and then comes back. There's actually a definitive line there that you can also see in a darker color. All right. What else was on there? Anything? All right. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, any public comment on this item? No? Nothing, Tony? Um, okay, questions. Do you oh. have any questions? Oh. Yeah, Not you. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> question. Yeah, what are we doing here? <laughs> um, what, am I live? Yeah. yeah. Steve Johnson, Project Owner. I just wanted to clarify one issue. I think at a previous meeting I had heard the project described as a condominium project. It's not proposed as condominiums. I'm trying to build a rental project. And if you look at the floor plan, there's no master bedrooms in those uh, large units. It's definitely going to be a rental project. Okay. Thanks. Do you have any questions? Uh, the material here is board, sorry, board formed concrete all along this railroad? Uh, yeah, mostly or because it, it needs to match the board form for the podium, so. You're concerned all about maintenance of that along the um, bike path? Of course we're concerned that it's maintenance for... You mean like for tagging? tagging? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to put this clear coat spray on it that's supposed to make it easier to clean but yeah. uh, hopefully the, the chain link fence of eight feet with thorns growing on it is going to be enough to keep people out mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah any more questions the 
numbers on the chimneys? It's the address. Of it. Oh, just the unit numbers? Or is it's, it's just, just the address. Oh, 517. Yeah. Oh, if you're right. It took me train. a while to get that to <laughs> Okay. It's very faint, like it, like it has been faded away so many times, like from years. So you have to be really... Got it. Any more questions? Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Only questions: the uh, acoustic enclosures for those entry patios that's still up in the air and to be defined. I went back in my notes, and it was it was a major problem that then I designed a solution for that I think we discussed about having the glass panels, which I have in a layer called glass panels. And then we, the note said that that went away. So it's not an issue at this point from the building department. But I could always turn the layer back on. <laughs> you mean it went away because you didn't turn the layer back on again? That's yeah. an easy solution. I'm going to try that one. First. No, 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 no. I talked to the building department. And after all, remember that whole thing came up a couple of years ago? It became an issue. And it's not for our public outdoor space because this wall is actually helping the outdoor spaces in the back. It's the space beyond this county. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's originally, you have a sound study that addresses where you're supposed to have glass, right? Yeah, because originally they were saying any place you can actually stand and enjoy yourself, you'd have to have a sound STC rating of below 60, as opposed to your private outdoor space, which is how the code was reading or something like that. So, we had that, and then we said, okay. It's all you. <laughs> Kirk. Oh, no questions. Anybody want to start? I'll, I'll yeah, okay. um, I think you've done a, a really good job responding to the comments. I think this is sort of the level of articulation that I certainly was looking for. I think the changes in the uh, parapets and roof lines, breaking up the mass into all the discrete forms is definitely uh, a really good improvement. So I think it looks really uh, more articulated, more, more scale to the building. I think the variation of materials is good. I, I like the horizontal siding as kind of a tie-in with uh, the kind of vernacular of the neighborhood. Um, I think my only comment there would be maybe, you know, this there was more contrast if this was a, a white or white kind yeah. of stucco, but I like the direction it's headed. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think this does the trick in my mind uh, for the project design approval. I'd like to see how you develop it. Um, you know, as we go down the road, um, only comment there might be, you know, possible variations in the bullion patterns to make it a little less regular. But other than that, I think it's, I think it's done the trick. So you did a good job. Okay. All right. Thanks, Keith. Um, I'll agree with a lot of what Keith had to say. This elevation is incredible. I mean, I like all the ins and outs, the way it's designed, it's taken on a new character. This is neat, the way you have your parapets on the elevations shown. I'll get back to that one. But, um, yeah, because I'm not sold on that at all. This works. This, this, this looks, it looks really neat. Um, I have a problem, and it has to do with more of the form of the architecture. And I hate to say we're trying to undo the architecture here, but this verticality and the way that this is all put together, somehow... Um, it doesn't match the simplicity of what's happening here and what's happening here. This element, and that can be your creative whim. And then there is that little 4x4, four 6x6 four, six six gutter line or something that comes through, and it's architectural detailing. Um, just design-wise, I know, whatever, this, this form right here and doesn't quite fit the rest of what's happening on these other two sides. So um, the rest of the building, it's working. We've asked, I mean, from my perspective, I've asked for some reductions because the units are large. When it was a nine-unit project, that's one thing. When it was a block, you've broken it down, even though it, it might be minor amounts of variations. It still reads as several planes, and it, it's not just one big rectangle. That's where this has a lot of interest, and it's kind of a two-story vertical solution. This here all being the same plane just seems really odd. This coming through and then that, um, I'm having a hard time uh, following this three-dimensional mass. 
compared to the architecture that was established here and that's happening there. Kirk. Thanks. Um, thanks, Madam Chair. I, I'm gonna, since I didn't review the tape from the last um, meeting and didn't have a chance to really review the drawings from the previous meeting, I'll, I'll be abstaining from the vote, but I'm still allowed to comment. So, um, <clears throat> now I, you know, I really, I really like uh, this street elevation. I, I, I um, in fact, it's the one I'm most enamored with compared to the other elevations because it has a play and a variation in form that you know the repetitive elements on the sides don't have. And I. I mean, I, I can see just from the discussion that you've, you've made some nice changes and moves to get uh, variation and shadow in those, uh, I guess it's east and west elevations. But in my view, I would, I'd like to see more of this going on on those sides. Uh, and I know that it's, you know, they're stacked units. It's a repetition of a floor plan. Uh, but seems like there might be a way to to have a little more play and I think it's just another step this is some small additional moves that could be made to have um, some more playfulness there but it's also true you've got this you know as you pointed out this enormous setback on one side of 33 feet and the railroad tracks on the opposite side so I, I think the side that the railroad tracks are on um, you is probably less important and in fact, I would say it's fine, and and that maybe if there's some way just towards the street side to get some of that front elevation play happening, uh, just on maybe on those first two units, so it also reflects that um, uh, that play, I guess is the word, in in form, in mass and form. That, that I think that would be just be a, make this a really nice project. So my comments. Thanks, Kurt. Stephanie. Um, I really, I really like the project and the changes that were made from the previous. It's got a lot of, lot more interest and variation, and I'm not that sold on the colors, but um, I really like it. I, I think it's, it's appropriate for the neighborhood and consistent with an, its own project. Yeah. All right. I have. I'm going to go back to just one question I had. What's the difference between the the concrete plane and the plaster plane here? This one's like four inches. Four inches yeah. in front. Yeah. Um, and that's a 12 inch wall. Yeah. But there's only four inches. Uh, between yeah, wait a second. It's, four, it's 12 inch wall with uh, with four inches added to it, so it's 16 inches in the front. So this this <coughs> is the difference um, in vertical. In plane, in between this and this, it's four inches. It's four inches, yeah. and this and this, and this is a foot and a half back. So this is the same plane inches. as that. Yeah. So the this is like a continuous materiality running through, and this just sticks Correct. out. Correct. Yeah. And this to this. Uh, that's like uh, four inches back. The same. From that. Yeah. Th these two are the same. Right. Okay. Um, all right. My only comment is is that um, I wish you could just get a little bit more than four inches here. Um, and I, I agree that these two planes need to probably be the same. Um, and it makes sense, and it also makes sense for these two planes to be the same. However, because this element stepped back, it wouldn't be quite as important. Mm -hmm. But um, that would be something that that I wish could happen, but I still like the elevation, and I think it's um, come a long way, and I think that you've pretty much addressed um, what we've asked you to do. Um, it would be nice if you could continue to study that when you're getting into your final drawings. Get it like a foot? It's not a deal breaker mm -hmm. for me. Eight inches or a foot uh, back would yeah. be? Um, Madam Chair, can I ask you yeah, question? go ahead. Does this have any um, function, like there's piping in there, or is this all architectural? Um? Uh, there's a closet in this laundry room, and then from there up, I'm thinking it would be the utility area for the uh, photovoltaics. It's like a little closet inside on the roof. And there's, and then there's also multiples that are happening on the other side. 
There's three other ones. All right, so where are we with this project? It says action may be taken. This would be a project design approval. The approval would be contingent on the city council action on the general plan policy regarding air quality. What does that mean, Tony? You know, last year the city adopted an updated or new general plan and one new policy is regarding uh, new residential units or sensitive receptor units, schools, residences, etc., within 250 feet of the 101 freeway. And this project is in that proximity. Um, but that's some of the general plan policy. We don't know exactly how that will be implemented. Staff's working on that. It could be that council will allow projects that were pending when this, pro when this policy went into effect um, to say they were sort of grandfathered in or they may proceed in the process because they were pending. That's probably a likely outcome. So we're, we're going to allow an approval on this project if you see fit. Okay. All right. Madam Chair, I'll take a stab at a motion here. So this would be for project design approval, uh, returning to full board for final approval um, with the following comments. Uh, the board appreciates the uh, revisions made from the uh, previous design. Um, the board looks forward to the development of the material colors and palette and uh, the applicants encouraged to study further changes of plane and refinement of the street elevation um, with the possible uh, inclusion of, of Let's try that over again. With uh, possibly um, continuing some of the design themes of the street facade around the corner to the elevations there. West. West elevation. And that's it. Try. This would be for architecture only since we don't have our landscape architect here. Second by Stephanie. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All opposed. Paul Kirk abstained. Motion carries. Okay. Thanks. Congratulations. Stretch from six point five. All right. Um, we're still just a little bit behind, going on to item number three, um, 1711 and 1713 Loma Street. This is a new item. This is comments only. It has some modifications. It's, uh, while we're getting ready, it's a proposal for alterations to the existing two-story duplex. Modifications um, for alterations to the building within the front setback. The railing exceeding the height of three and a half feet within 10 feet of the front lot line and for the reduction of the required open yard area. Hi. Hi. Your name for the record? I'm Deborah Sorensen. I'm okay. designer and project manager. All right. All right. <laughs> this is my first time. That's here. okay. Just so explain the project and. It's a house on Loma Street. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of Loma Street. It's a really impacted street with um, parking. Parking's very, very difficult. The owner has lived here for many years and is trying and is ready now to do some serious work to improve uh, the aesthetics as well as to improve the function. So what we're trying to do is get cars off of Loma Street and into the back. There's um, three car um, 
There's three one-car garages underneath the property, underneath the house. And uh, the owner cannot get into them currently, given um, the grade in the back by the, um, the steepness of the grade and also the limitation of the space between the garage and the planters that are in the back area. And then also trying to just improve the look so it doesn't look like a prison anymore. <laughs> uh, so this is removed. the front elevation. That is the front elevation. Lava. This is the front elevation. Yeah, both of those. Yes. It's the property on the downhill side of Loma? Yes. Okay. It's right at the, really close to the crest of Loma. You know, it's right on the downhill side, but right at the, the uh, junction of the, or the juncture of the crest. So we're wanting to remove siding. It's in dire need of repair and stucco the house uh, using plywood underneath. Um, change out windows uh, to be um, wood clad interior, aluminum exterior. Um, change the front a bit so that we can uh, have some privacy in the bedroom area, that little screen in the middle area of the front here. This in particular is to cover, there are bathrooms right behind that. And removing this front fence uh, means a lack of privacy. So we are, we have great, uh, <laughs> uh, great issues because the house sits six feet off of the into the setback. It, we only have six feet off of the sidewalk. That's all we have. So frankly, I wanted to do much different designs in the front, but our hands are somewhat tied because of the issue of it being a setback. So uh, we intend on doing some major planting to improve the front elevation. Um, for instance, here, the windows are high as they look. Uh, have an issue here because the tenant, this is the tenant's uh, place. She's lived here for 10 years. The owner lives here. The tenant's bed is right here, so I would love to extend the windows. Really cannot do it uh, because her bed is almost at the elevation of the window. So instead, intend on just doing some major plantings. Changing out the driveway, removing it, putting pavers in, changing or uh, taking down the east side fence, replacing it with a new fence, uh, putting railings up uh, where um, there is some there are some codes that are violated because the railings aren't there on e both the east and the west side of the property. And then we're also extending the back deck um, to uh, not make it deeper. It will be the same depth, but we're tying together the two decks to increase the size a little bit and to give it kind of a different look so with a divider in between and mm, planter pots and stuff like that will be on the back side. That side isn't visible to anybody. There's a large hedge in the back. Um, yeah, so the whole back side here is there's a hedge here, you know, a house here, not a view, the view going this way. And so really the owner wants more view, a little bit more space, increasing these um, door sizes as well. They're currently about seven and a half feet wide. We're uh, changing them to be 10 feet wide each, so he has more view. Um, Where's the expansion of the driveway at the rear? It's right here. Right now, if you, you'd have to look at the photos, but you know what? I happen to, I brought some. Let's look at the because, photos. Because I think that it's not as clear as it could be in the photos you have. So I brought that. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah because I was concerned about being able to understand what's going on. So currently there's a... Here's uh, the back right now. Right. And then if you look back 
uh, from the garage downward, this is what you see. So there's a lower, there's a little wall and then this a lower is the yard. Wall and mm -hmm. the lower yard right now. Then currently there's a planter in the front of it with an angled. So this is area. that's right in here. Yes, that's right in there, like that. That's this is that. about four feet wide here, and this is mm, about ten to. So it really interferes. So when he's driving down the driveway, if he parks his vehicle at the edge of this planter that's right here. Which you never would because it's in the setback, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> if he does, or when, if he could, uh, his vehicle is about up to here. So to get into the garages, we need more room this way. So we need to remove this planter and the angle here. Uh, you know, it's been suggested that we use like a grass crete here so that this, we know about the 25 foot, uh, uh, this needs to be 25 feet or supposedly needs to be 25 feet. And so that's why we've put some grass crete here to try to still be able to use it to access to get into the garages underneath. What's this dimension from here to here? That is, well, I know from this edge to here right now is about 33 feet. This is 18. So if we, and I believe we've put in the extra seven so that we get a 25 foot dimension here. So from, from that edge to here would be 33 minus seven. So that right. would be, yeah, 26. What about, just to make a full presentation, the new retaining wall. The new retaining wall would be in the same location where the old one is, which is seen right here. It's so it's not a new retaining wall? N no. Well, uh, that will have to be, it, it has to be higher. Okay. Yeah. So to, so anyway, so yes, we were going to remove that retaining wall and put in a higher one. How tall will it get? Uh, it will get up to 36 inches. So does everybody understand that this rear deck currently looks like that? I just wanted to put that on the screen. And it's not getting any deeper or it is? It is not getting any it's deeper. It's just connecting right. with the screen. Right. We have some beams in there that are the proper length for the depth of the, um, of the current deck, so we're leaving it as it is and not replacing old beams. And the, um, the new railing that exceeds, this is the, these are the mods now. Just, this is for the board. The new railing that ex that's in the front yard is where that exceeds 42 inches? The new railing is on the, uh, let me see, I got to see. This is the front elevation. Yes, and it's really the east side that I want to look at. Is this east? Sorry, this I'm east. upside down. Okay, so what is happening here, okay, is that there is this issue where, uh -huh, the driveway, the grade is going down, and from here to here is 34 inches approximately. And then to have, if we didn't put a railing here, um, of course, then it would be a huge danger because a kid could be climbing up here and just fall over. So we have to put this railing up here. Um, to prevent that from happening. And this then, therefore, will be higher than what is um, allowed. In the front yard setback. Yes. That's one mod. Set, set and the other, the other mod, uh, the other mod is alterations within the front setback itself. Right. Which are these. Yes. Maybe that. But, um, and the two windows, that's correct. And the windows? Yes, that used to have just one window here and one window here. We're trying to change up the front to give it a little bit of a different punch. And, and the, the reduction of the required open yard area. 
Where, where, what's that mod? Explain that mod. That would be this issue, that this is only 18 feet and this is 50. This is a 50 by 100 lot. So this is 18 feet by 50, this current yard, and then this would be the other seven. So uh, we're, with the grass crete, we're fine. Without the grass crete, if we were to use pavers all the way down here, we would only have an 18 by 50 square foot here, which doesn't meet the 1250. Is that but you, you are proposing grass crete. Yes. yes so, but are. why do you need the mod? We don't then. Maybe. Oh. They will because it's less than 20 feet if you're 18, your minimum dimension. Oh. So if we made it 20? I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I don't know enough to talk about your project. Well, I'm just trying to get the mod straight. Oh, that's so, right, because we uh, could do 20. It's true, because the, the, the minimum width is 20 feet. That's correct. I know that. Of, of open yard space. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's if correct. If you put a modification right. on everything, and everything else, add that to the bunch. No, it's already in here, and I'm trying to figure out why she needs it. That, I was just trying to get right. the mods clear for the rest of the board. But okay, we'll leave. We'll table that one. For okay. Um, all right. Is that Madam it? Chair, one one more item. Go I ahead, believe Tony. it's in the front step yes. The two gables. Won't, you're changing oh, yeah. this oh, yeah. to Thank become full gables. Thank you. Yes. A roof alteration. Yes, yeah, so a roof alteration. These are Dutch gables currently. Where are those photos the, again? The front. I keep feeling them, Gary. I'm sorry. <laughs> Leave me alone. And we're going to leave the Dutch gable on the main roof and feel like that will be, a, that's fine, I think, aesthetically. You just don't like it here. Yeah, and the overhang is enormous. It's 18 inches overhang or more. So we'd like to take that back a bit, maybe to a 6-inch overhang. Just clean up the roof line a little bit, make it look a little more charming than... It is. Okay, is that it? That's it. Thank you. Um, anybody here for public comment? Seeing none, uh, questions? Anybody want to start? Yes, I have a question. Yes. If you do increase that open area in the back to 20 feet, you still have enough space for your backup out of the garage? We do, but frankly, it would probably it would be preferable to keep it at 18. The owner is. But Grass Creek would. Would be the okay. grass creek would be okay to She's rectify that. that, but you're right. We could use either. The, either you need the mod or you don't. And right now, the record's saying there's you need the modification. Right. So, staff, can you? Is it because there's the level change in the middle of it with the retaining wall? Well, as far as I know, grass creek is still considered to be driveway and oh, not okay. eligible to be open yard. Maybe it's more supportable if um, it's grass creek. You know, when I talked to Steve in transportation. It was his solution to our problem. That he, he felt that Grass Creek would still be considered or would be considered open yard. And if that's not true, okay. but I that's don't know what I was told. That, no. I don't know Why don't you confirm that particular okay. mod to staff and then yeah. more questions? Do you have any questions for me? Uh, questions from the other side of the table. Yes, I have a quick question. Um, in the front yard, do you have the layout for the proposed sidewalks and hardscape and planting areas? Um, I don't have a landscape layout right now. I do have, if you look at, you know, it's the, um, let me show you the, it's the floor plan view, honestly, I believe. Show it here. Let me think. I know it's here somewhere. Let me think. <laughs> what are you looking for? I know. I'm looking for the stairs. I'm wondering, yeah, uh, what's happening <laughs> yes. in this whole space. There's sidewalk that just goes in. And this is all planting. You know, it, it will be planting, but there is. I'm sorry. Let me take a second look. I have a. Mm, set of plans that shows the stairway and it looks like uh, what was your question again uh, I'm just wondering what's happening in the front yard okay we don't have a landscape plan <coughs> right okay but the so hard well, let's too, like look at the front if there's let's a look at the front there's an entry sidewalk of some sort or there is not there is what's happening here be. let's look at the front view 
What's happening here is currently the owner, if you looked at the plans, goes in through those big wood fences. He goes in this way and then walks down his path. We are now going to put a front entrance, just a gate here. Uh, it will either be mm, the metal or it could be wood to, you know, mimic this a bit. Um, and so he'll go straight in and there will be um, a sidewalk leading straight to this spot right okay. there. That's what I'm looking for, yes. where the sidewalk and is. And you know what? I'm going to baffle right now. Let me make sure my elevation. Looks like that gate's right there, Chris. Yes, the gate is right there. But on the other side, what is happening is... Uh, currently, it's ramped. If you look at the photos, you can really see that. It disappeared. <laughs> Uh-oh. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just kidding. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so do you have on this? Mm, let me just put this. <laughs> So here is the new railing, railing, and this, the tenant here, will be entering in this way. These will be steps. This currently, if you look at the picture, is a ramp going down very dangerous. It's right there. Yeah, it's very it's right here. not good. So instead, we're going to put some stairs uh, heading up and make this level, and the stairs will be coming up. Any more questions? Gary, oh, you're in a Kirk, hurry, Paul, you? anybody? <laughs> questions? All right. Comments? Uh, Stephanie, you're not ready? Yeah. Keith. <laughs> we'll pass you up. I Keith. just got these. That's okay. Um, well, maybe I'll comment on the modifications first. Seems like the uh, improvements to the front yard setbacks really technical in nature, since the building's existing non-conforming as far as setbacks. It also seems that, given the level change, um, the railing height in the front yard setback is also technical in nature. So neither one um, has an aesthetic impact. Um, the rear yard open space, um, I would encourage you to come up with a solution that eliminates that modification if you can, just because the fewer mods, the better as far as lights goes. Um, aesthetically, I kind of have a problem with the, the giant wide cantilever deck in the back. Um, I understand the desire to increase the the usable space there, but just aesthetically it's kind of a strange element to be kind of cantilevered out the back of the, of the structure. Um, so do you have any recommendations? I'll that leave that to your okay. imagination. To So you'd rather see uh, two individual decks? Or? Just, He's just saying it's, he, it's too big right now. It's one. It's too wide and and for a cantilevered element, that's it, really kind of thin and visually um, kind of flimsy looking. Um, I guess the only other aesthetic comments would be on the front elevation. Um, if you could study the window. Um, Patterns. It, it, it's it's just a little. Uh, I don't know. You got the two windows on the one side. Look at it here. Symmetrical, symmetrical uh, overall form. Then the the window placement in it in within that is not symmetrical. And I think the elements like the shutters and the little vents in the roof look a little crowded. But um, I think that's all I can come up with there. Thank you. Um, talking about the front um, modification, I, I have a slight concern with the losing of the Dutch gable on these two ends, just mm -hmm. because it looks all cute from mm -hmm. the sidewalk. You have two photographs there, mm -hmm. and it's in the front yard setback, and right. I want to say you're taking away some of the charm yeah. of the house. 
-hmm. It's one thing when you take away the wood siding and replace it with plaster because of simplicity, adding mm -hmm. shear. We don't like that, but I can understand the, the, the reasons for it. Getting rid of the Dutch gable, I can't support because okay. visually I think it's, it's cute. And it would also be nice, perhaps, maybe if you kept some of the siding in these two front elements because that's part of the charm of that neighborhood because mm -hmm. your adjacent neighbors and across the street, they maintained it, and then elsewhere you can go with your plaster. Right. I'll let that be open to you, okay. but there is a certain amount of uh, cottage character that gets lost when it becomes a plaster box. Right. Um, the deal with the, uh, the railing in the back, I more look at it from the the working drawing aspect of shear walls and, 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 and how that spirals out of control real fast with your lateral by, by making your existing openings. You've got a structural engineer involved. Um, so I don't have an aesthetic comment because it's in the back, but I just see that, see that as a big money pit from the owner's perspective. And then the last thing is just, it has nothing to do about design review, but once you alter the building more than 75%, the city will require you to fire sprinkle the whole entire project. So evaluate how much your budget is and what you're going to do before you get too far down the road. Um, and also verify those numbers with your client, with the city. But um, it's, it sounds like an aggressive project. And, that's, and then the, the thing with the uh, back out space, mm -hmm. it's, if staff supports it, I'm fine with it. If staff doesn't support it, I can understand their reasons, and it's a tight garage, and it'll remain tight. So I'll, I'll go with the staff hearing officer's opinion on whether or not they'll support getting into that garage, existing garages. Bye-bye. I'm sorry, I'm confused Oops. about that. So what do you mean? Aesthetically, this extra five feet that you're going to add is yes. irrelevant to me, but it right. might mean a lot to the staff hearing officers. Okay. Because you already have existing garages, they can't deny this to you. You still have access to your garages. What you're trying to do is make it more accessible. Right. I'll let them make that decision. Okay. To me, it doesn't matter with the building too much. Kirk? Sorry, I didn't ask it earlier, and if I missed it, someone else asked. Mm -hmm. So this wall is underneath this walkway? Yes. And it's existing or new? It's existing. It's existing. There's a photo of that, if you want to see it. Um, so this is, uh, and it currently only has, it doesn't have a rail. It has okay. no rail. So, okay. And this dimension, the walkway to here is only 28 inches or something. But it, it does look like it, it has, the wall goes up 28 inches, is that what you're saying? Yeah, and it needs to go up higher? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's not high enough. So are it's you taking it low. down to the... No. No, you're we're just going to extend the wall it up. And okay. we're going to just... Add to the top. Yeah, okay. put the rail in between the posts that right. are currently there on the east side, at least, on the west side. Okay. Attached to the wall. Thanks. Uh, then my comments would be, uh, I agree with the previous comments about the gables on the front, I think, or the... Uh, the hip gable, okay. uh, that those should stay, um, Dutch gable rather. And I also agree with the comment about the back. I think the, this, the having the two separate decks at the back is it's just a nicer, uh, less monolithic uh, look. Okay. And um, also I would uh, suggest studying uh, making maybe some little portions, like one of the pop-outs here and there on the house remaining horizontal siding, instead of just doing the whole thing plaster, right. just select some relatively small areas that you could keep as siding. Right, which um, could be the front as mm -hmm. these two, because they do pop out and extend, they could be the siding and that would face the road. Those are my comments. Great. I agree with most of the comments. Um, uh, specifically, the hip roof, I, I, I feel that should remain. Um, as far as the plaster goes, I, I kind of feel like there's too much plaster on it. I really think that it, mm -hmm. by plastering this entire building, which especially the cantilevered portions, it, it, it to me, it, it would not look... Um, very cohesive with this project. I, I think it still needs some elements of uh, vertical siding in order to 
in order to. I'm sorry, horizontal could actually have some vertical siding, but um, but I think it should keep some elements of some wood siding on it. Um, and I'm not a real wild about having the shutters just on the first the two new windows and mm -hmm. and then the rest of the building not really a hint of that. So I, mm -hmm. I kind of feel I know that uh, it's nice to separate some identity between the two of them, but um, I'm not sure if shutters are the way to do that. We're trying to add, you know, another color element in yeah. instead of just... You know, Deborah, actually, can, can, let's let everybody make their comments, and then if you have okay, a question, fine. that's okay, just because we're running a little behind you. Thanks. And I'm a little uh, disappointed in the amount of landscape, the amount of hardscaping there is, as and um, the lack of vine pockets and um, landscaping. And... Uh, I don't know much about enough about the fencing in the area to mm -hmm. to comment on that, but seven feet seven foot high, depending on how the elevation is, may or may not be excessive. Uh, the railing, I, I think that mod the mods that are, you're asking for seem reasonable to me, so um, I don't have a problem with those. The third one as well. Yeah. Okay. Chris. Thank you. Um, I don't have much to add. I, <clears throat> I do agree with, with what's been said. Um, I will look next time to see what's happening. I'm having trouble figuring out what's happening in the front with the hardscape and uh -huh. where the sidewalks go and where the planting is. Um, that screen that you have in between, to me, seems very high. I don't know, you know what that material is going to be yet, but... Um, and I know you're going to put planting in, in, in front of it, but right. we'll be looking at what that detail will be. But I would consider lowering that a bit. I think the issue is the height of the sorry, sorry. bathroom windows. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> just observation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, I don't really have much beyond that. I'll just look forward to what the landscape plan will look like. Um, and as far as the mods, I basically feel the same um, as Gary. And in the backyard, you know, to me it seems very sort of stark. It could use a little more interest. And I imagine you'll be putting additional planting in there. So maybe it's just the plan is very basic right now. Um, but, you know, so anyway, I'll look forward to the landscape plan when that comes up. And that's all I've got. Great. Um, all right, can I see those photos one more time, Gary? <laughs> I don't know why I'm having, I just keep wanting to refer back to a couple of things. Um, okay, there's been a lot of discussion about this taking this building and stuccoing it. And mm -hmm. I just want to weigh in on that because unless you were planning on adding two by trim to every single window, it would be completely inappropriate to stucco this building. We were doing two by two trim. You were adding it everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I still think it, it's a shame to lose the siding. But if you if you really wanted to stucco it and you were going to do all the detailing completely appropriate, including maintaining the depths of the trim and the window mm -hmm. with respect to the trim and the eaves and the fascia then and then the underneath side of the eaves and what are they and all those details that go along with restuccoing it's a um, it's a huge project so um, I think I mean I might be overridden and everybody still might want the siding but just think really carefully about that decision um, and how how bad it is and the cost difference between replacing the siding that needs replacement versus all the work that you'd have to do to to um, to provide an appropriate detailing for the stucco. Um, I think that this vent detail is it's just not quite appropriate for this style house. I think that because all the windows are square and the and the vents on the front are already this rectangular mm -hmm. design, I would. I would stick to to that kind of a, a detailing and look look to the existing uh, vents for inspiration for the the new or the oh you were taking those out and putting those in okay um, I think they should be consistent I don't think that this um, gabled end should be reduced to six inches 
at all. I think that's too small. I don't think that this overhang hang is inappropriate at 18. And, um, and I think you should check your required egress windows in your bedrooms because um, it doesn't appear that any of your windows right now, the way you're showing them, would meet egress requirements. There's three windows in this front bedroom, and it doesn't look, appear that any of them have a sill height that's required. That's the the maximum required. So just check that. And those are my comments. Um, this is, but I think it's, um, I think it, it you know, it'll, it's going to be nice. And Loma is a really interesting street with a lot of cute houses. And this photo set shows some of them. And um, you have a lot of constraints with the house being so close to the street. I understand that. So these are, this is comments only because of the mod. Um, Did Stephanie want to say something? Did oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I passed over and I forgot <laughs> to go back to her. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Go ahead, Stephanie. I agree with, I agree with the comment about the roof overhang staying as is and the roof detailing staying as is and the siding remaining. Um, I think you can, there's opportunities for color changes with the window cladding if you replace the windows uh, and the window trim and the siding color all can be, you know, different and charming um, if you study those. I have a question about this cantilevered element here and this, <laughs> it wasn't really shown in your elevation uh, and is it or you and it's being changed. Oh, okay, it is. Okay. Yeah. That's so it will no longer, that's with the structural, so it'll be a straight, straight line okay. up with the wall. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't really see the purpose of the, the having this screen in the front at all, and I think it, um, it's, it takes away from the, the depth that you get from that setback element, and you could probably do some landscaping for privacy screening and if you are replacing the windows you can look at um, getting more privacy in those rooms with smaller windows um, I don't have a problem with the balcony in the back as you've shown it. those are my comments all right thanks Stephanie all right does anybody have a desire to make a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion and it's a record for it. Um, the first part is to uh, move this on to the staff hearing officer returning back to full board with the following comments. First of all, um, if you're okay with this as the applicant to maintain or to preserve the Dutch gables in the front, the board would be supportive of the, of the window changes at the front elevation. But the board is not supportive of the removal of the Dutch um, roof. Second point, uh, the board is um, is okay with the railing being greater than 42 inches. We see that as technical in nature due to heights and, and uh, guardrail issues. Third point is the board is supportive of the open yard reduction due to increasing the use, usability of the par uh, existing garage parking spaces. So um, another comment would be is did the applicant to study the amount of plaster being proposed. Um, you're encouraged to maintain some of the existing horizontal siding look and perhaps even adding some vertical siding elements. And I'll let you design, but it was made by one person, however you come back to the board. Um, some board members are, uh, would like to see the cantilever deck reduced in size. Leave it open at that. Um, applicant is to verify the bedroom window sizes for egress. And the applicant is to remove or redesign the privacy screen in the front. And two other items I don't remember is if we talked about landscaping and what the comments were about color. So that's my motion until we add more to it. Do I have a second? I'll second that and uh, just add one other comment, not in the uh, minutes, uh, the comments uh, for the project, but just as an added note, I, you know, Stephanie's uh, point was well taken. I think that front screen could really 
be an enhancement to the front if it was nicely designed. It incorporated some real design elements as opposed to just uh, kind of the standard thing you'd see everywhere. So I think that there's an opportunity there. All right, I, under discussion, I have a couple of comments. Um, I think that if it's okay with the maker of the motion, there needs to be an item that says that, that the applicant is to um, return with the full landscape plan yes. and clarification of all proposed fencing. And, um, and there was another item. I'm not sure if you wanted to add it or if you specifically didn't want to. It was study the final window and, and shutter proportions at the front elevation. I would agree yeah. with Gary that I had a difficulty with the shutters and the way that they okay. were designed, but that was just um, okay. a study, yes. Um, and I I don't know if, if anybody else but me, I would prob I'm probably not going to be voting for this um, because the, the motion says that all three mods are, are acceptable to the board, and, um, and that's going to be the reason I'm not going to vote for it. So I mean or may not be the only one, and the reason I would not be voting for it is because I don't think that the third modification for usability of parking within the interior at setback is an appropriate justification for adding hardscape. And that would, I just wanted to state that. So, um, any more, does anybody else have any discussion on the third modification? I don't think staff's going to support it. One of my comments was to ask you, what, what did staff say, if they were even going to support such a mod? I'm sorry, with the grass creek, you mean? With no. anything. The third modification. The third You're mod. asking for a reduction in the open yard. You were did required staff? to meet with somebody at the staff to go over the mods before yes. you came in front of Did yeah. they tell you and give you positive feedback that staff would support such a... They thought it was possible, given the impact of Loma Street being as hard as it is drive there and you can see people can't park they have to drive way far away it's really 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 bad it's about the worst street I know frankly. so did they just to clarify that because I'm maybe I'm still confused did they say that did staff say that the that it's impossible to use the existing garages and that's why you need the extra hardscape yes they yes. did say that specifically well yes kind of because I think I believe the distance that 33 feet which is not 33 feet right now. It's much less because of those angled um, planters. Um, isn't enough to get into a garage to do a turn. So well, 33 just, feet is not the know. only dim backup dimension that's required. It depends on the right. opening of the garage. Right. So right. what I guess what I'm asking before I don't vote I see is before I don't vote positive for you I want to know if staff recommended that you that that you go for the mod and that they would support the mod because they think specifically that it's going to be providing a better parking situation when I talked to Steve that's was his solution is to put the grass creek there and that it would provide a better possibility for parking <laughs> Okay, I guess I'll just leave it up to staff to make the decision. Okay, any more discussion items? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The landscape was to provide a landscape yeah. plan and yeah. provide a plan with showing the fencing and the heights of the fencing. Mm -hmm. um, nobody opposed, nobody abstained. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Just resolve that with them because. Um, so there's no uh, opportunity for me to speak right now? None? Because you're not, I'm really surprised at that. Oh, I'm sorry. I um, really am. I I'm didn't, a little surprised. You didn't, um, sorry. <laughs> you didn't request to speak at the end. I'm so. sorry. I didn't know that that was okay, what okay, was. Okay, so we'll just yeah. let her say a few words. Well, first off, the siding issue, there is no insulation in the house. None. Zero. Mm -hmm. It's 1928, 29. So either it all gets removed and then replace with cement siding, hardy board, which is a lot more expensive than using some stucco. So there's some, you know, cost issues there, and the owner would like to have an insulated house. Frankly, it's a really cold house. What does so, the siding have to do with the insulation? I'm sorry. Uh, once you remove, you insulating, we either go in from the front, we rip everything off and insulate the heck, or we go out of it or we go in from the inside 
what does that mean? Bore so. a hole in every one of the stud bays and you fill it. Yeah, the yeah, you could do that. Yeah. So anyway, that was part of the reasoning is to get it removed and to and also the windows. This is very misleading because the foundation. If you look at the photographs, the foundation rides right here. This is where the foundation okay. is. Okay. And it's exposed, fully exposed, really bad. <laughs> So that's why plant in, that's why this dimension from here to that is accurate. It's like okay. 42 inches or 41 inches or something, and the width is fine. So anyway, so that's definitely fine. So anyway, anyway, it's, um, yeah, <laughs> going to be an interesting process. Oh, I think that my concern right now is that the, the owner will just say, forget it. Oh, and it will look like it does right now, and that'll be that. And it's too bad to think about that. I I'm hate that. I know, I know you were that. saying you couldn't I do know. it. But that's not on the whole structure, which is fine. Anyway. Come back Hi. with come back with um, with a, some solutions to our questions. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that's okay. yours to keep. Thank you. Sorry I didn't know. Oh, right. That's okay. And there are people in town who do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know you was hoping not to. All right, that's okay. um, moving on to our last item, number four, 1320 East Gutierrez. Hi. Uh, Tommy, I have some new sets that have more information on. It's exactly the same as those, but there's no change in like mass bumper scale or really anything other than detailing. Is that okay? So we're not going to look at this, Mark? Hopefully not. This has a lot more information, but it's exactly the same. <laughs> you know, as far as the building. That's hard. Here's, uh, this is a new item. This one has some color. Uh, um, action may be taken if sufficient information is provided. This is a uh, proposal for additions to the rear of an existing duplex. An existing carport will be removed to achieve the required separa separation from the main building. All doors and windows will be replaced. This project will abate a violation. Okay, your name for the record. Mark Miranda, agent for the owner. Yeah, those are yeah, great. Yeah, great. you can uh, put the cover photos are nice. Share Sherry, members of the board, staff. Um, basically, the project in front of you is an existing duplex. It's a two-bedroom, one-bath downstairs with a two-bedroom, one-bath upstairs. It was originally built in 1950. It's got like the 19, you know, 40 steel windows in it. Um, right now, it's kind of like a, a pinkish fuchsia color. It's kind of hard to see in these photographs. Um, when it was built, the upper floor was the unit and the downstairs had a garage kind of where this was and this was a multi-purpose room and this was the laundry room. And then when the, in the 80s, this was converted to a unit and when the owners purchased it, they rectified it by legalizing it and then they built the, the two-car carport. So right here, there's two uncovered spaces, but also in the back of the lot, there's a, a two-car carport that just sheds one way. And recently, there was a carport installed here that was covered, and all the, all the violations have been abated, and um, a building permit was pulled just to kind of put a handrail on here. But now we want to come in with the actual, kind of move these off to the side on, maybe mm -hmm. over here. Site plan. It's a couple lots down from APS, so it's sitting up towards the top. And looking at it from the front, you enter the front entry here to go upstairs, and there's a way out the back kitchen down the back. And there's retaining wall all along here that it's built on, and these were the original parking spaces as well, and the carports here. So, what we want to do is just add on to the back 391 square feet on the bottom. Here's the existing floor plan, basically. You now they have a living room, dining room, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, bedroom, kind of mimic top and bottom. 
This has a little bit of a low ceiling, so it was called storage. What we want to do is add basically a master bedroom below and a master bedroom above with a two-car garage. So the house ended here. I'm putting a bathroom for, uh, well, actually on the bottom, it's just a, a master bathroom, closet, master bedroom with a two-car garage with the washer dryer in here. And then on the second floor, proposing a bathroom for this bedroom and then a master at the top with a deck outside. And then also this deck off the front because these were all just uh, casement windows along the front. And we're changing this to a French door and then leaving the casements. So all the windows in the building will get replaced with Milgard aluminums. And instead of uh, the, the, the lights that you see uh, on the casements that open up where they have the fixed in the middle, we're just doing it without the, the dividers. And these are the elevations. So let's see. This is looking from the back. It's basically all new casements along the master bedroom with uh, sliders downstairs and then casements in the, the kitchen above. And then along the, the rear, all the windows remain the same, except in the new, we're putting one down below. And we have some light details and some hardware details and a couple different wrought iron options that we'll get back to. It was re-roofed a few years ago. It's kind of like a autumn sand look. And the colors that you see are basically uh, typical La Habra Pacific sand, so it'll get color-coded. And um, when we look at the, the front elevation, we're just going to change the front door here and the front door here and put some, some windows on the side of it to delineate that this is the lower unit's entry. And the garage door will be just a standard fold-up. It's a mahogany wood door. And then he was putting some, uh, some light in the master and also into the man door to the garage and then it just goes into photos and then there's a roof plan back here I see the roof plan on the sure there is a instead of it being a, a, a hip at the back it is a, a gable at the back which is something that the owner would like and you can't really see it from from anywhere so I'll let you guys make a determination on that And there is a detail for the windows where it's going to be bullnosed on the outside to give a little bit of a shadow line and then also on the inside where the, for the drywall. So all the windows will be changed out and the existing openings, instead of them being replacements, they'll be nail-on fins. So they'll, uh, we'll just repair the stucco around them because we have to color code it anyway. for public comment. Do we have any public comment letters? Nothing? Um, okay. Is anybody ready for, with questions? Or are we all just taking it in? Quick question. The awnings that are going away and staying away? Correct. They're to be removed. Thank you. This is all being added, Mark? Right. This balcony element up here. All this the rod iron. downstairs too, this Correct. whole element? Yeah, it's, it's, it's mimic top and bottom. How deep is that again? It's uh, seven feet deep. It's on your plan somewhere. Yeah, it's on the actual floor plans. Should be like a sheet back, so. Uh, that's the two sheets. 
Actually, here. it's six. Yeah, six. It's seven feet on the master side here, so six feet deep to the to where the wrought iron is. Oh, what's These that? are 12 by 12. And then on top, there's an 18 by 18 uh, sandstone cap on the, on the balcony above. But yeah, when you're looking down here, they're 12 by 12. Okay. What's 12 by 12? The columns here. Here, top and bottom, and then it has a sandstone okay. cap at the top um, all the way around. Questions? Questions down here? Is this is this below grade? Is that what's that showing? Oh, yes, this. Um, from the back, there's a retaining wall that runs all the way along it. So on that side, he's probably showing it, but no, that's not that's not like that on the bottom one. But on the back elevation, there's a retaining wall that kind of makes up the wall itself, and then the building's built up off it. So when you're inside, you're seeing you know, a plastered wall that's about this high, and then it's stick framed up to the window. And it's not flush. It's there's a re the wall recesses a little from the foundation edge. Um, no, it's flush on the inside too. Is this it? Yeah, this just this is basically yeah. at the back. If you look on the site plan, there's a retaining wall that runs all the way along. Oh, okay. So that's looking at the retaining wall, not the yeah, side of the exactly. house. Yeah, exactly. Okay. This wouldn't even you wouldn't see this because this would be uh, like okay. a curve. So the cycle goes down to the ground. Right. Okay. And this back here? And we'll have to put a weep screed all the way around it. Now it doesn't have a weep screed. Back here? Which side is that? Oh, um, that's that's going to go all the way down to the ground, so that's going to be, that's the not stucco correct does. either. Okay. Right, that'll be stucco all the way down. This here is actually grade. Grade. Yeah, so this is going to be stucco all the way down. That was my question right. originally. Okay. That is below grade. That's so below grade, okay. and then that's right. not because that'll be the garage level, so it'll, you know, on the outside. Okay. Actually, that's I'm not confused. true. No, no, because the, there's a wall there's that comes wall. all the yeah, way around, the mm -hmm. and it's sitting on top of it. So this is, so that's you know, how about two feet up off the ground. Mm -hmm. So it is grade. So mm -hmm. the stucco goes down to to that gray line. This is the same condition where, where the draftsman's showing. Right. Showing this is actually right. grayed this here. This is grayed because that's that doesn't actually, exist. Exactly. The, the garage is pulled all the way out to that point. It's sitting on the wall. Okay. And the walls will have to be rebuilt. I have a question. Yeah. Um, is the front of the house in any of the front yard setback? Or no. It's just back far enough. Just I think it's at, it's at right at 20 feet. Can you show me? I mean, is there an opportunity to do some embellishment to that front door to match the rest of the architecture? Here's the front setback. setback is uh, 15, and then it's actually two stories, 20 in the R2. So it's right at 20 to that point, and the, and the front door and is so here. And so this post supporting... Right, that, that wooden post. Or that, that wooden yeah. post is right at the 20-foot line? Right here. Correct. It could be changed, and that could be an arch. And there is some tile here that you know we could stucco if you wanted to as well. It's like a yeah. kind of like a clay tile. He said right here that, where this red is. That oh. walks up the the stairs. Can I ask you more questions? Yes. And yeah. I, go ahead, Kurt. Um, so are, are you keeping that post and that little roof overhang at the front or not? Yes. You are keeping it. Okay, it's just not shown. Right. Okay. Um, it's on the elevations, but it's not. Uh, and then, Mark, uh, looking at the window detail, the um, these are you said they were nail-ons, but you're in my my experience with nail-ons is that basically you know they're attached to the outside, they're nailed to the outside, so you don't really have a chance to recess it, other than the seven eighths or because stucco, yeah. because all you get is a bullnose in return to the window. Right. So if there's I don't I, unless you're thinking of some other product that's not actually nailed to the outside. No, it is. It is. Okay. Yeah. All right. It won't be much of a recess. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Gary. Did you have some photos of the neighbor? Um, there are on the other sheet. 
Um, no, there's a couple of across the street. There's we got some photos directly across the street. This is uh, directly across the street. Have Do you have out. photos of this house right here? Where the deck is facing? This that's directly across the street and this is next to Oh, no. Actually, there's not, because there's, like, a parking lot there. There's actually uh, behind the fence. What are you pointing to? Um, it's not this sheet. It's Grab that sheet. sheet. Yeah. Do you have photos of the house that would be right here? Yeah, not this is this one right here. You don't have any adjacent properties. How did you even get past the counter? This one. Okay. <laughs> this is adjacent to the property? Yeah, so it's... That's like the property line. Okay. Do we know what the fenestration is over there um, and how, how that correlates with their proposed deck that you have? No, I don't have any of their, their windows outlined on there. There's like a six-foot fence here along the driveway, and then, yeah, okay. I don't have that information. And, and landscaping plan, are you planning on keeping the fountain? And no, the fountain has to be removed because it's it, it's, it's, it's not allowed per zoning. Okay. And then there is a a lot of stamped concrete in that area, but we have we don't have a landscape plan at this point. Okay. And do you have um, some sort of layout of of the wayfinding of how you're going to find the entrances to these two? As far as you mean the concrete itself, or uh, just paving? Where, yeah, as far as either the concrete or the or the just a wayfinding of how to get to the two different residences? No, we haven't delineated that. Okay. We'll have to come up with that on the landscape. I mean, currently, you come down the driveway, there is different types of brick and stamped concrete intermixed. But there is no particular path that actually is a different color or is leading you to to believe that this is the front door for the upper unit. Right, and then uh, the trash is located. Where's the trash located at? Um, on the site plan, it's uh, on the back of the house. Since it's not in the setback, it's about nine feet away. We're putting it um, over here. Okay, great. Thanks. All that stuff is kind of elevated and up. Um, everybody asked their questions. The, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, the railing in the front, would those, uh, those be code that are seen in place? In this one? This railing? It needs to be taken down in height. That was part of the violations. Okay. The taken down in height? Removed, correct. To be... No, which, which railing are you talking about? The, the stairs? One. The, the one at the sidewalk. Oh, the one at oh, the sidewalk. Yeah, the front, okay. uh, wrought iron, it has to be taken down a little bit in height because it exceeds the 36 because it's sitting on top of like about a 9-inch curve. It's 42 that's required. How high it's so it is. Right, it's right, yeah. Maximum Three is 42. Six. I mean, it's maximum. It is 42, but it's sitting on top of a, a curb, so that makes it over height, okay. so it needs to be taken down. So you're taking the whole thing off? No, it's still to remain, but it has to be lowered. Not taken down. And you're lowering the whole thing, or are you just taking off the arched portion? Uh, lowering the whole thing. Well, we could, you know, come up with a, a new design if that's not appropriate that your, to the architecture. That's your question? Uh, yes. I had a question about the other railing, Mark, and that's, are you just leaving that? You're leaving this railing to the stairs? No, that's slated to be, to match all the other railings on site. There's two different proposals. Well, the ones that we're proposing along the, the upper balcony, and which is on uh, this sheet right here. Which is there's a couple different styles, so those will go all the way along. Because it just looks front. like you showed a, a straight design. You don't have any of this right, anywhere. That's right. what I'm wondering. Yeah, about. he wanted to see what uh, was appropriate. I think that I like the straight design personally. What's yeah, your, what so are you often. proposing? That's what we want to know. Uh, well, he gave you a couple options. We're proposing them all. This would be nice. This is what he wants. 
Who's he? The owner. The owner. All right. Um, Stephanie? Um, this uh, balcony on the rear unit, is it higher than the side one? Then two different levels, it looks like. There is a step there. There is like the an eight inch step um, okay. going up into that. Okay. The floor plan shows two risers on I think, does it? Yeah. See it? Right here. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's that elevation change. There's a change in finished floor elevation. Yeah. Any more questions, anybody? Comments? And I think it was because it was so low. The, 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 the ceiling height was only about 7.6. So we had to bring it up a little bit because this room underneath didn't meet code. Okay. Go ahead. You can't lower the floor to raise the ceiling. <laughs> um, I think, as Gary pointed out, I think we're going to, um, I know we're going to want to see the uh, adjacent properties outlined, including the location of fenestration and hopefully some photos so we can um, verify there's no privacy conflicts with the locations of the new decks. Um, I think the mass bulk and scale of what you're proposing is. Uh, reasonable um, architecturally have some comments um, seems like the changing of the proportions of some of the windows uh, from the old steel sash particularly in the front elevation um, in my mind is uh, I think that the previous proportions were a little more pleasant if there's such a thing um, and also the breakups of the windows. So particularly here, this is kind of a nice horizontal proportion, the relationship to the, the opening versus the mass that it's in. And I think there's some of that's lost with the square proportion. And then likewise, the kind of hierarchy where you have the larger fixed Fix. portion and then the smaller operable sash, I think that's got a little uh, variation in scale that's pleasant that's kind of lost. So I'd, I'd encourage you to study the proportions and the breakups a little more um, and like the for example at this lower entry elevation perhaps just having a side light or two side lights um, rather than having the three openings right next to each other um, seems a little little awkward and I'd encourage you to study the proportions of your balcony overhangs that it just looks spindly right now there's not much you know, um, mass that's kind of holding this up. So I think your columns could get wider and this lintel could get deeper to make it appear more um, substantial and just kind of architecturally, you know, correct. Um, likewise, I think just the columns here could get wider. Um, I think as Kirk pointed out, you may want to study the window sash detail and if there's any way you can get any sort of recess I mean, the old steel sash were thinner so you did get a little relief there versus the flush aluminum so um, so I think that's the extent of my comments I think again the bigger picture mass bulk and scale and all those kind of things um, are fine we need to verify the privacy and, and study those architectural elements okay. thanks Thanks, Keith. Stephanie, are you ready? Okay. Um, Keith is right on the mark. I had a couple of additional comments. The one thing that I might be the only one standing on this comment, but I think you're changing the mass of the building enough that we need to do something with the front porch. The front porch, when I look at and plan and, and in the photos, just looks bad mistake whatever and then we're going to be adding all of this mass over here which just brings to attention this 4x4 four four post and your setback is there, but however you can do to doll this up to match the vernacular happening elsewhere I think would be beneficial uh, Keith's comment about the windows are great one thing that you can do with your window details is bring in a sill because it seemed to have a little deeper of a sill and 
however you work on that, but the, the proportions as well as the details of the windows are important. Um, the column sizes on the architecture, if we go to the elevation real fast, wherever sheet that is. Um, Keith mentioned about the proportions of it, and I agree, it just needs to be studied whether you make this bigger, you know, make this fatter. I also make me perhaps look, study, look at making this narrower. Maybe this only needs to be 12 inches and this becomes 16 or 24. I'm not going to say what to do, but it looks a little um, clunky and also spindly at the same time. Landscape plan will be important. There's an opportunity to add some windows to the rear. I know no one will ever see it, wherever the rear elevation is, but um, there's just a huge blank wall. You've got two bathrooms up here, and you have a master bedroom. There's no reason why there isn't some um, windows. And then there's something weird about the roof plan. I'm not quite sure what happens there. Your roof plan kind of has a hiccup in it, and then the front, so that just needs to get resolved. I guess this, this does work, but there's something in the roof plan that didn't work. And the gable end doesn't really bother me, even though it would be nicer if it all had hips. But more important is the front door to me. I, I think that's more important than having a hip in the back. Thanks, Paul. Go ahead, Kirk. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I think the only just a couple things to add. I agree with uh, previous comments. Um, I think the, the to me the front elevation as it is now has a very simple, you know, old, inexpensively built but still charming. Uh, residential look to it, and I, I think I, I'd hate to lose that. You know, I, I think it, this should be an upgrade of the building, and and um, so I'm, I'm afraid about. I'm scared that the window replacement is eerie, that you're going to lose the bull nose. I think that's really important, and uh, the tile that's on the face of the stair, it's hard to see in the photographs. You mentioned it's tile. Um, if that could be replaced with tile as opposed to stucco, I think that that really helped the front. Um, and also the awnings on the front, I think, are really nice. I think you ought to study uh, putting putting some new awnings back or replacing or remodeling those on the front. And um, and then also the fencing on the front, the arches, I think, are uh, a little bit hokey. And that maybe you should study taking the arches off the fence in the front. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Kirk. Go, Kerry. Um, I agree with most of the comments. They were all very good. Uh, I do think that the uh, columns on the on the balcony are a little too large. I, I think they should be reduced or the ones underneath it increased in size, but they shouldn't be the similar in size. Um, I disagree with Paul. I would rather see the roof be hip in the back. I think the gable's kind of out of place. There are no gables on the on the building and it seems a little out of place to me. And, uh, and then I would agree with Paul that, that, that the west elevation needs some study on some fenestration. And it's missing some fenestration there, and it, and it has a real starkness to it. Okay. Um, that's it. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, you know what? I, I have to completely agree with Kirk on this one, with the, this, this building being so simple. And I think that the direction that you're trying to take this, I, I, I understand what you're trying to do, but I think it's going in the wrong direction. I just think that that, that there is um, a, you know, a certain amount of charm to this. The awnings aren't the nicest awnings, but um, the, the building itself is so simple and there's a beauty in that. And by the, the balconies that you're adding and the way you're going about doing it with the arches, you're taking it into a totally different Spanish style, um, in my opinion, that is, um, it, it, could, it could be done. Um, it just seems like a lot more work because the detailing, like some of the other board members have said, is not there. Um, these, this detailing with this cap, um, sandstone cap is, like other members have said, completely inappropriate. Um, it's, it's, it's bulky, it's heavy, it's, um, it's not traditional, um, and um, 
Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with everything that's been said. I don't have to repeat everything, but, but I think it's going in the wrong direction um, instead of making the property better. And, and I know that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to upgrade the property and make it nicer. The, the arches in the front, um, the front uh, porch, um, removal of the awnings is going to, and, and then re replacement of the windows is going to make the front facade completely plain um, with, with no delineation. Um, there's there's a small overhang, so um, this this kind of bulkier Spanish style is is going to be really difficult to do with this house that you have to work with, in my opinion. Um, I don't I don't think that the um, I mean I respect the owner having the opinion that he really wants this. I respect people being opinionated about it, but I don't think this particular design with, with one section of scroll and the rest having the knuckles is, um, is also, I don't think that's traditional. Um, and I agree that the proportions of the windows are not on the front elevation, I, are being lost. Um, and it, yeah, I again, think you going just drew that direction. incorrectly because they, they're not changing as far as okay. you know, the sizes of them. Um, so those are those are basically my comments. I'm I'm not I don't have an issue with the mass the massing of the addition. It's it has to do with what I I can visualize what all these details that you're proposing are going to look like when it's built, and I think it's going to not be as nice as the simplicity of the way the architecture is right now. So, um, anybody like to make a a motion? Others can add to it. Um, um, project um, mass bulk and scale appears to be acceptable, but um, there are a number of things that need to be restudied or additional information provided. Um, <clears throat> we need footprints of the adjacent property owners, for one. Um, the windows need to be studied to uh, retain their proportions and variation, um, as well as providing breakups in some areas like the existing house has. And overall, we uh, would like to see the revised uh, proposal to retain as much as possible the simple charm that the existing building has. Um, study the uh, proportions uh, and of the uh, all the balcony uh, detailing uh, columns and um, headers um, study uh, eliminating possibly or reducing in size some of the columns shown at the second floor balcony railing uh, study or verify that uh, the window detail will indeed provide adequate uh, recess. Um, study uh, retaining or uh, remodeling the awnings at the front and the tile shown at the front balcony. Um, uh, possibly study uh, eliminating arches entirely for this project. We're not, uh, the board is not uh, sold on the idea that they're appropriate to this style. Um, and that includes the arches at the the uh, front fencing. Correct. That's all I've got. I just want to add. I'll second the motion. Okay. And okay. Uh, just to clarify, this would be an indefinite continuance back to full board. Yeah. And um, on the additional information to provide on the site plan, also mm -hmm. include the uh, approximate locations of the adjacent fenestration of your neighbors. Okay. And uh, yeah, the board looks forward to a uh, preliminary landscape plan. Okay. Any other discussion? Adding some additional windows or fenestration to the west elevation? Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. you guys about we didn't talk about it. Um, there were. The we can say some, some board members feel that a hip, rope, <coughs> hip uh, roof at the addition would be more appropriate on the rear side. Is that okay, Kirk? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion?
Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks. Thanks. So that concludes our meeting of the Architectural Board of Review for January 23rd. Good night, everyone, and thank you for listening. <laughs> With personal